Uh, everyone, my name is Jay Gordon. I'm a cloud advocate with uh, Microsoft. Uh, I spend a lot of my time focused on helping others understand DevOps fundamentals. And so I was listening to a song by a band I like a lot named Converge, and it made me think of my dream for technology teams for there to be no more heroes. So I jumped through some ideas and I wrote this talk. And I really hope you enjoy it, and I want you to kind of understand I, I really want there to be no more heroes. And so I am going to be using a little bit of comic book analogies and there's going to be a little bit of comic book violence. And if that bums you out, don't make me mad. You can turn out, tune out. Uh, and, and just as a programming note, I'm going to summarize some plots for the comics I reference. So please allow me to take some liberties, especially around the Justice League International and things like that. I try my best. So um, like I said, if you're not into the violence, Feel free to now. But anyway, uh, our world has kind of always looked uh, to superheroes to come for us, to give us guidance, uh, sort of vision, and help when things are bleak. And, uh, and they can be political leaders, they can be athletes, activists, and even sometimes the right person at the right time. Uh, we place these people upon pedestals and we assume that they will always have the right answers to the big problems that we face. And so in 1939, DC Comics introduced the ultimate superhero, the man who came from space to save humanity from its foes and from itself. And whatever comes Superman's way, the citizens of Metropolis and America will always count on him to solve the problem or vanquish the evildoer. And whether it's Lex Luthor or General Zod, he's been the hero for those who needed their hero. And so Superman kind of always is there when we have some sort of disaster. And when we're scared and when we're uncertain, Superman can fix just about every major disaster. And if there's some sort of disaster that needs recovery, he seems to always be there. Um, he'll find the cause of the disaster. He'll stop it, and then he'll find a way to help life return to normal for the citizens of Metropolis, maybe the planet, by everyone who's been affected by the latest week, week's big enemy or evildoer. And so when we're scared, Superman seems to find a way. But then DC Comics began to find that a number of the supervillains that Superman battled seemed to be too reliant on technology. They wanted something that was literally nothing but pure chaos and destruction. They said it was to be doomsday for Superman. And with that, doomsday was born. He is a genetically engineered demon monster sent to kill our hero. That's doomsday. He's really, really scary. A lot of the problems we deal with sometimes are scary. And a lot of times we have to go with them alone. And like soups, Sometimes you have people that are there that are not trained enough. They don't have the ability. And so the Justice League International, they simply didn't have that training or ability or the powers to defeat Doomsday. They're easily defended. And once again, our hero has to go into this battle alone. He takes on the responsibility to stop the chaos that was engineered well, so well to destroy him. And he does it until it kills him. I and mean, it does. In 1993, DC Comics kills Superman after 54 years of being the greatest hope when light is the most dark, Superman is just no more. He could not stop the chaos that was Doomsday alone. He thought it would be, he was thought to be humanity's greatest line of defense. All his strength, all of his cunning, all of his power, none of it was enough to stop Doomsday alone. So, when we lose that individual that's seen as irreplaceable, we begin to recognize that all of our success seems to go through this person. And you know, whether it's the last son of Krypton or someone on your ops team, we can fail the most when we just rely on a single individual. And so when our indestructible hero is no longer here, we're left in a situation where we have no idea how to handle it next. And so heroes make us safe at work because we spend our time putting these heroes into positions that we think are super because it feels good. We call them these new fancy terms for being overworked. 
uh, like rock stars, 10x devs, ninjas, or superheroes. Uh, we run into these people who are perceived as superpowers and having superpowers, but most of the time they're just stuck with tons of institutional knowledge that really hasn't been documented. And all this kind of reminded me of another fictional character, a, a superhero of sorts from a book I read. Um, I read about this less flashy hero named Brent once. He seemed to be the Kryptonian hero of a company called Parts Unlimited. And Brent is a central figure in fighting fires, ending disasters, and quelling the chaos the company throws at him until he meets his next foe. And so uh, it's just more fiction. But in a lot of times, fiction shows us that it, it, it's a reality that impacts a lot of us. And the foe that really... Uh, shares the, uh, the name of the story and how it goes wrong, the Phoenix Project, is, is the latest evildoer that comes out for Brent. And Brent acts as this superhero for Parts Unlimited, and he tries to hold off Doomsday until it finally comes in the, super, the Phoenix Project. And the company realizes how important Brent is to every single part of the daily IT work. And so that leads me into hero culture because our single hero always seems to get us out of every jam. Hero culture puts a single individual as a primary source of truth in disaster situations for many companies. It focuses less on the ability of a team and places a single person or persons at the center of all things that is good or bad. And this creates a reliability on that single person. We make them in this mythical creature that handles everything when the deploy goes wrong or when the server goes down. But this is only going to stunt productivity and reduce collaboration because much of the information that these heroes have is either not well documented, like I said before, or those documents are just not shared. And maybe it's fear, maybe it's being used to it. But when you think about things like bus factor or how many people can a company can afford to have hit by a bus to still normally operate, you can understand how this lack of information sharing creates far more harm and chaos than it does good. So yes, let's not say bus factor for Superman, but doomsday factor. How many doomsdays can we actually handle with just one person left to defeat them? If Brent or Superman go on vacation, get sick, or maybe get new jobs, or planets to protect. There's obviously a glaring hole for both groups that really rely on them. And so a greater reliance on one single person and organization just can risk your whole business. And so we're going ahead, we're talking about placing responsibility in one hand's risk. It's that lack of shared experience. It's the doomsday factor, or what we call bus factor. I also like cat factor. Uh, how many people can go out and be cat wranglers on TV without you know, the company falling apart. It, collaboration can't happen if just one person who goes to take care of their cat uh, goes away uh, and, and you don't have the other person to take care of your servers or fix the problems. And so how do you get this changed? How do you make a difference? How do you feel better about your, your organization? The first thing you need to do to change is to one, admit this exists to take inventory of what exactly this one individual, this hero always seems to be doing, and then document it and invest in tooling to help with sharing that load during disasters. So better ways to have that actually spread with run books, information that even automated, you know? And to start wrapping this up in a red cape, teams help accomplish more. Teams with a shared goal can help better mitigate disasters. They can also help reduce overwork on a single person, improve the products and systems they maintain and ultimately keep things alive. And in this case, bringing back Superman back to life was a team job and the team of the Superman actually did that. So if we work together on reducing our reliance on a single hero, we can watch our team soar. And the same thing kind of happened over at Parts and Limited. When a team was deployed to stabilize and eventually create better methods of deploying software, they reached a greater level of success. And they were able to launch the Phoenix Project and, you know, things stopped going down all the time. 
I guess it kind of worked for them. And so finally, I kind of want to just end this with something that made me kind of inspired to do it. And that's to quote uh, a band called Converge. And they wrote a song called No Heroes. And it goes, Hellhammer comes down onto their blade. Our world of widows needs to be saved. It's now or never. It's victim or victory, rebel or regret, no matter who you are or know who you claim to be. No more heroes. No more. No more. Thank you very much. I appreciate you watching me.